Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, bless your name, God.
Matthew chapter 5, verse number 3. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 3 through verse number 12. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 through verse number 12. And um, we're going to read these verses 
We're going to ask the Lord to help us in understanding what he will say to us as we consider the words of Jesus Christ. How many of us love the word of God here today? Amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 through verse number 12. We'll read these verses, and I ask that you will follow along with us as we read them aloud. It reads, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Can we all say amen? For a few moments, we want to speak on the topic, the power of being happy. The power of being happy. Amen. I was thinking and praying on this topic, and it's a very intriguing thing to think about, the, the idea of happiness, the, the fact that, that happiness is something that can be obtained and, and actually enjoyed, and, and even in many instances pursued. We're reading over, and we know as Americans, our ultimate goal and our ultimate ambition centers around being happy, being fulfilled, having pleasure. In fact, whenever our great founders, I don't know if I want to call them great, but our founders of this country, they decided to break from Great Britain and to establish a national representation of their values. They put in there, in the Declaration of Independence, the pursuit of happiness, which is the idea that every person has the fundamental right to freely pursue joy and live life in whatever way that makes that individual happy. As long as they're doing it legally and without violating the rights of other people. In our fabric, in our hearts, in our being is the idea that, that I deserve to be happy. And if anything or anybody threatens that happiness, I have the right and also the duty to respond. And I just want to know here today, how many of us know you need to be happy here today? Amen. I, you, you know, something's wrong when, when we don't want to be happy. And, I, and I, I did a survey and observation, did a few research and all articles and different things. And what I found out is not many people in the world are happy. We like to think so. We like to think that people are happy. We like to even think that we're happy. But truth be told, if we were to analyze our lives and take investigation of the things that we are connected to and analyze our own emotions and, and our own spirit, we'll find out that we may not be as happy as we think we are. There was this Spanish caliph who was very powerful and had a lot of riches. and He had a lot of authority. He had 50 years had passed by as he became this, this, this dignitary. He had riches, honors, pleasures, friends. He had every single thing that he could ever, that he could ever desire. And he sat down one day and he began to think over the years and over the days and calculate how many of those actual days over the last 50 years led him to conclude that he was happy. And when he got through calculating over 50 years of service and duty and pleasure, he concluded that out of all of those years, only 14 days were filled with happiness. Another woman who had very great influence over the king of France, she had anything she wanted, anything she could ask for, he made it happen for her. And she ended up saying that out of all that I have access to, all of the ambitious activity that I've enjoyed myself to, she says, there's nothing that really truly makes me happy. In fact, Pope Adrian, he looked at his life and he came to the conclusion that he was so unhappy during the time that he served as Pope. Here's the Pope, one of the most powerful men, not only in Rome, but in the entire world. And here he has said that 
during that tenure of my life, I was the most unhappy. And what I found out, brothers and sisters, is whenever we're the most productive is oftentimes when we're the most unhappy. It is when we are the fullest in our bank account, when our health is the best, whenever things are going absolutely the way we think it should go, if we were to really investigate our lives, we'll see that we're not as happy as we think. And, and, and deeply, I think Solomon hit it on the head whenever he looked at it and he says, all is vanity, vanity of vanities. Everything is, is, is like chasing the wind. In verse number three of chapter one in the book of Ecclesiastes, he says, what profit a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun. What is it that I actually get from getting everything that I absolutely want? Can I get an amen for somebody? Anybody ever got some money and found out it wasn't as, as good of an experience as you thought it might have been? Uh, you got $1,000, let's say, and then before you know it, the $1,000 was gone. Every, every time I get my paycheck, I look at my wife and I said, I was happy at least for one minute because after that one minute, all the drafts started coming out of my bank account. Can I get an amen for somebody? Anybody ever looked at your bank account and said, where has all my money gone? What's going on with my money? Because truth be told, happiness is a hard thing to acquire. It's a hard thing to actually have. We look at our text and we find that these individuals, they meet Jesus Christ for the first time. They see him walking in their life. And I don't know about y'all. I just I, I love talking about Jesus. I can honestly say uh, 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 because of Jesus, everything else in my life that is good has happened. But I can honestly say that Jesus is absolutely the best thing that has ever happened to me. Can I get an amen for somebody? Anybody feel like that here today? That, that Jesus is absolutely the best thing that has ever happened to you. People, people often want to want to challenge that because they say, well, what about your family? What about your, your job? What about your career, your education? And I often tell people, if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't have any of those things. But it's because of Jesus Christ that I have, amen, the things that I have. And so Jesus walks into this place. The Bible says he, he went from place to place, from village to village. And he went from place to place in a place called Galilee. This is a place of great poverty, a place where you didn't have a lot of money. There was a lot of opportunity, but there weren't a lot of chances for people like the Jews during this time. There was a lot of fish markets. There were a lot of, 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 of agriculture, but... But if you were to go into a Jewish village, they were at the bottom of the totem pole because they were under what we call the Roman Empire. Most like us today, we, we think we have rights in America, but really, if we want to get right down to it, unless you are calling your own shots and unless you have your own enterprise, uh, you are somewhat of a slave because you have to give your time to things that don't return to you the value of the time you invested into it. Can I get an amen for somebody? Anybody ever went to work and say, what is the point? What, where am I going with this? Why, why am I not getting 100% out of, of, of what I have given? And so these people were in very impoverished conditions. They were the lowest of the low. And Jesus walks in there. He sees all these people running to him. And he begins to say in chapter 5, verse number 3, blessed are the poor. And he begins to outline these different conditions. The, the word uh, blessed, the word blessed literally means happy. If you were to translate it out of the Greek from the Old Testament in, in the Septuagint to the New Testament text in Greek, it literally means happy. It, it means that I am, I am happy. And, and what we don't understand about this text is how can Jesus walk up to people who are poor, who are mourning, who are hungry and thirsty, and look at them and say they're happy. What he's showing us here today, brothers and sisters, is that our happiness cannot come from external things, they must come from inward things. Can I get an amen for somebody? Uh, in other words, there is a such thing as subjective and objective happiness. Subjective happiness is when a person, they are happy because they got a new job or a new car. It is an emotion. It is something that is in a response to something that has happened that can be controlled, can be taken away, can be dictated, and it can be moved based on what a person have. Another thing about subjective happiness is it's all centered around luck. I was listening to an interview by Warren Buffett, and Warren Buffett is one of the richest persons. He's giving away a lot of his money now. But Warren Buffett was one of the richest persons, people in the world. And he says, people ask me all the time, what do I attribute my success to, my fortune to? And he says, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. One of the things that made me as successful as I am right now is just pure luck. 
In other words, I was born at the right time to the right parents with the right skin color. I was born a man and not a woman in a certain period in history. And because all those things fell into place, I got the money that I received. Can I get an amen for somebody? Subjective happiness is based on luck. Just so happened that it, that it happened out this way. Uh, and so, therefore, when a person's money, when a person's relationship, when a person's life or health is touched, and therefore their happiness is touched. But there's another thing called objective happiness. It's when a person is happy because of things that have happened inside of them. It is a virtue. In fact, philosophers saw it as the highest virtue, the highest accomplishment of a human being. That is to be happy no matter what is happening outside of you. Can I get a man for somebody? And I just want to know here today, how many of y'all can say, I'll be happy no matter what's going on around me? Uh, the, the word of God actually shows us that God desires for us to be happy despite what circumstance we might be facing. No matter how much money you got in your pocket, no matter how much people talk about you, no matter how much people walk out of your life, the Bible shows us that you can be happy no matter what's going on. He proves that here in chapter 5, verse number 3, because here are these people who are determined to be incapable of being happy, and he walks up to them and say, you are blessed. You are happy. The word happy also means to be fortunate. It means to be privileged. It means though people may write you off, you are the real ones whom God has chosen to be blessed. How many of y'all know you're blessed here today? How many of y'all can say, no matter what people do to me, I still will be blessed? Can I get an amen for somebody? No matter how they do me on my job, no matter how they do me in my car, whenever I'm driving down the road, my blessings are not dependent on what people do around me. It is dependent on the God that's inside of me. Can I get a witness from somebody? And so in this text, he walks up to him. He says, you are happy. And I can imagine them sitting there saying, how can this be? I want to talk to you today about divine happiness, about about divine happiness. That is the sort of happiness that can only be found in and through Jesus Christ. It is the sort of happiness that you get that whenever things are going so wrong in your life, whenever you're so discontent with the things that are happening, you know, there's a sort of life that you can live and you can just go by, the, by what's going on in your life. But, but I made up my mind this week as I was studying for this text. I will not allow anybody or anything to take my happiness away from me. Can I get an amen from somebody here today? Can anybody just make a vow to the Lord that no matter what I face in my life, I have made up my mind, I will be happy. Can somebody say amen here today? Why don't you give God a praise for the ability to be happy in Jesus Christ? Well, the question we might ask is how can we be happy? How can we be happy whenever, whenever our relationships are falling apart? How can we be happy when our children are strung out on drugs or something is happening in their life that we know should not be happening? How can we be happy when our economy is collapsing and whenever we are being oppressed by governmental systems and, and situations and circumstances? How can I be happy whenever I'm not given the opportunity that other people are given? How can I be happy whenever I walk into the street and I risk losing my life, not because of anything that I've done, but because of my skin color? How can I be happy whenever I go into college, gotten all the degrees, gotten all the debt, but it seems to no, never pay off. How can I be happy when everything in my life seems to be against me? And the text says, Charles Spurgeon actually talked about this. He says, one reason, one reason alone for us to be happy is because we are saved from eternal damnation. Can I get an amen for somebody? In other words, if you take a moment to think about where you were headed before Jesus came into your life, you'll come to the recollection that no matter what's happening in my life, I can always give God a praise. Can I get somebody to say amen here today? I can always deep, dig deep down inside of me and say, Lord, I thank you because I'm not going where I should be going. Instead, I'm going to be with you. Can somebody say thank you here today? So in the text, it shows us that these people, they were able to be happy. And I, and I want to I wanna give you a few things here that I want you to see that can help you. Because every now and then, we leave out of church and we own a 100%, we own 10 
Amen. But, but how many of y'all know Monday is coming? Can I get an amen for somebody? Anybody got to go to work tomorrow? I don't know about you. I know I got to go to work tomorrow. I hate to even bring it up on a Sunday. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. We're not supposed to be thinking about work right now, but, 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 but it's the reality. We got to go to work tomorrow. And one thing I made up my mind to do a long time ago, I made up my mind to have no more blue Mondays. Can I get an amen for somebody? I said to myself, what sense does it make for me to go to work on Monday and tell people how miserable I am and how upset I am to be here, how much I wish I was home after all the worship that I gave God on a Sunday? Sometimes you got to go to work with your head up and say, you know what? Out of all that's going on, I'm still going to be thankful. I'm still going to be happy. Can somebody say, I'm going to be happy? Come on, let's say it like you mean to say, I'm going to be happy. Amen. Amen. The text says you ought to be happy. Amen. First Peter chapter three, verse 14 and chapter four, verse 14 talks about the ability to be happy, to be blessed. Happy are you whenever you go through diverse temptation, whenever you are going through persecution, whenever people are slandering you and people are talking about you. He says you ought to be happy. You ought to be joyous. And, and one of the things I found out is in verse number 12. I want you to look at verse number 12. Here are four things that can keep us happy. Four things that can keep us happy. The first thing he says, you ought to rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. I'm going to say it like you mean it. Everybody say rejoice. He says, you ought to rejoice. The word rejoice there literally means to bid farewell to the things that are holding you. In other words, if you look at verse five, verse three through verse number 13, he says, though you are poor in spirit, he says, you are blessed because, he says, you have the kingdom of heaven. In other words, this is your condition now, but it won't be like that for very long. And I want you to have in your mind that I have the ability to rejoice because I'm not going to be where I am for much longer. Can I get somebody to say amen? In other words, I might be poor now, but I ain't going to be poor forever. Can somebody say amen to that? You know, I, I hate to see Christians get content with problems. I hate to see Christians get content being down. I hate to see Christians get content with being walked all over by the enemy. I hate to see content, uh, uh, Christians become content with being second, third, and fourth. Because the Bible has promised us all throughout Scripture that if we can just hold on, if we can just look forward, our day is coming. Can somebody say amen to that here today? How many of y'all believe your day is coming here today? I want to see some people that's happy. Are y'all happy here today? Y'all look like y'all sad. Look like y'all had a bad week. But, but the Lord is telling us that we got a reason to be happy. He says, you ought to rejoice. You ought to look at that problem and laugh at it. I remember I had a, a friend that was in a car accident one time. And we were right there for 26 on Bush River Road. And, 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 and if you know that intersection, there's an intersection there. It's really bad because people are trying to get off of 26 and get onto Bush River. And as he was going down the street, a car just kind of cut across the light there and just knocked them all across the, across the street. And the accident was so bad, the guy got out of his car and was trying to, trying to leave the accident. But whenever we went and I saw him, I got out of the car and I looked at him, I said, man, how are you? He said, I'm all right. He was just completely shaken up. And I think analyzing everybody, everybody was okay. But whenever I walked back to my car, I looked at his car and I just started laughing. I couldn't stop laughing because all that was playing through my mind is the things that the enemy wanted to do to him. The things that the enemy want to do to all of us. The Bible says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And I want us to always bear in mind that if you are alive and if you are able to recognize that you are here in the presence of God, you owe God a thank you, Jesus. Can I get somebody to say amen here today? You owe God something because you at least know you survived another day. And if you are alive another day, the Bible says you ought to start bidding your problems farewell. I got some problems. How about y'all here today? I, I'm going I'm to go home tonight. I'm literally going to start writing down my problems. And right next to them, I'm going to say goodbye to every last one of them. To debt, goodbye. Amen. To a bad work condition, goodbye. To, 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 to bad things in my life, goodbye. Y'all know what your problems is. I don't want to get in your business. But I want to invite everybody to write your list and start telling those things goodbye. Can I get amen for somebody? Because that is your way of rejoicing in the midst of problems, and by doing so, amen, the Bible shows us that we will, amen, become and stay happiness, and stay happy, rather. Look at the next thing in verse number 12. It says, be exceeding glad. Exceeding glad. Everybody say, be glad. be glad. Come on, say it like you mean to say, be glad. 
The, the word be glad, the phrase there, be glad, literally means to jump for joy. Can I get an amen for somebody? Amen. It, mean, it means to jump for joy. Some people may say, well, what am I jumping for? I'm jumping because I know that trouble don't last always. And I know that this is not going to be forever. This is just temporary. And so what he says, not only should you bid your problems farewell, but what you should also do while you're bidding those problems farewell is you should be jumping up and down. And I know some of us, amen, may not be able to jump up and down literally. The older I get, the less I can do it. Can I get an amen for somebody? <laughs> amen. The, 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 the older we get, the more tired we get. But inside of you, you should be jumping up and down right now. Can I get an amen for somebody? You should be thinking about the fact that those things that are holding me, they're not going to hold me any longer. One of the things I realize is that as believers, amen, the enemy has this wonderful ability if we let him to take away our hope. Can I get an amen for somebody? You'll go from day to day and you'll hope for nothing. You'll go from day to day thinking that this is all that God can do for you. But I read somewhere in my Bible, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, that is able to do beyond what I may think and even imagine in my heart. The Bible says God can do anything. How many of y'all believe that here today? And so when I get to thinking about what God can do, my soul gets happy. My soul begins to rejoice. It, mean, it begins to jump up and down. And, and brothers and sisters, as we begin to find ourselves in a state of happiness, our state of happiness should be matched by our expressions and our behavior. Can I get an amen for somebody? You ever walked into a church, walked into a job, and people say, uh, are you saved? They say, yes, I'm saved. And you say, I, oh, I didn't know. Because, because your disposition sometimes can lead people to think you're not as saved as you really are. I remember going to the church, and there was this story, amen, of, of, of these, this man that was sitting on a log, and, and God was looking down on the, from the sky and looking down on earth, and, 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 and the bird was just flying through flying through the sky and chirping and just singing and chirping and singing. And he was just flying and dove and going through the trees and just singing as he went. And then, and then the man looked over and then he saw a squirrel just jumping from tree to tree as if, as if his life was just full of pleasure and joy. And then he looked across the yard and there was a dog that was asleep, but he jumped up out of his sleep and just started running around, running around the yard as if there was this big smile on his face. And then God looked at the man. He was just sitting there on the log. Can I get an amen for somebody? One hour passed by. He was just sitting there. And then two hours passed by. And he was just sitting there. And before you know it, three hours passed by. And he was just sitting there. And I, I began to think about the story. And the Lord reminded me, sometimes we can be like that man sitting on the log. Our life is just passing by. And we find no reason at all to be happy. But, but can we just make up our mind, Lord, I'm going to stay happy. Can I get somebody to say amen here today? Amen. Now, you ever think about why? Why do you ever never see a bird that's look like he's crying? Why do you never see a dog look like he's unhappy? Why do you never see a squirrel just sitting over there taking pity on himself? It's because they understand this one thing. They understand that God, no matter whether they can explain it or not, but God has done so much for us. Can I get amen for somebody? That we have no reason to be sad. Can I get somebody to say amen? No matter what's going on in our life, we owe God praise. And so as we look in this text, he says, I want you to rejoice. I want you to be exceeding glad. But then he says in verse number 12, he says, I want you to begin to think about your reward. What I realize, brothers and sisters, as much as I don't get here on earth, I know I got much more to gain in heaven. How many of y'all going to heaven here today? Amen. And you ought to make up your mind right here today. I'm not going to miss heaven. Can somebody say that with me? Say, I'm not. I'm not going to miss heaven. Come on, let's say it like you mean to say, I'm not going to miss heaven. Amen. How many of y'all are happy about heaven here today? Amen. The Bible says your reward is great in heaven. In other words, I've suffered. I've gone through the problems. I've faced the circumstances. But he says, understand that your reward is great in heaven. The next thing he says is that you are in great company. I think about the people who came before us, amen, that had to go through so much, that had to suffer so many obstacles and so many, and so many trials and circumstances. Some people were beaten and are still being beaten today because all they want to do is give God praise. And every time we walk through that door, we ought to come here with a praise on our lips. We ought to come here with our head held high, 
We ought to come here with a smile and with glory coming out of us because God gave us another chance to praise him. Amen. Can somebody tell the Lord thank you here today? Amen. Thank you for the chance. Thank you that I didn't get beat to come in here. Thank you that I didn't have to ask somebody permission to walk into the house of God. Thank you that I did not have to ask somebody if it was okay to come to 900 Third Avenue. But when I got up this morning, I got up with the Lord on my mind and I decided I was going to go into the house of the Lord and give him praise. Can somebody give God a hand praise here today? Amen. That that we didn't have to face the struggles of those who came before us. So he tells us, amen, to rejoice, be glad, amen, to think about those who have come before you and think about the reward that is in heaven. And automatically, according to the power of God, we should be happy. We should have this happiness that God gives, this divine happiness that God gives to all of us. Amen. I want us, as we go through the week, I want us all to be happy. I want you, every time you begin to think about a reason not to be happy, I want you to think about these verses and say, you know what? I have no reason to complain. I have no reason to actually be unhappy. I was talking to a man the other day. He's not from America, but he said this to me. I said, I was thinking about the, we're talking about the national income averages. I'm talking about different things that are happening in the world. And he says, you know, uh, David, I want you to understand that most of the world's percent, most of the world. And, and we talk about the world population. Most of the world, they live off of $4,000 a year. Can I get a man for somebody? $4,000 a year. $4,000 a year. And I was talking to him and I was saying, you know what? And I wish I could get this. I wish I could do that. I wish we can see household incomes go up. And he says, you know, we often measure things from one side. We often measure things from one perspective. We don't think about the global things that are happening in the world and even though we know we are better off than other people, we sometimes allow our circumstances to take our happiness. Can I get an amen for somebody? So all you need to do throughout this week is just think about what God is doing for you. Actually sit down for a moment. As the song says, when I think about what God has done for me, all the wonderful benefits, the Bible says, my soul does what? It cries out. It's an automatic response every time you begin to think about what God is doing. And so I want some thinkers here today. How many of y'all can commit yourself to thinking here today? That every time my spirit gets low, I'm going to think about the time God healed me. Every time my spirit gets low, I'm going to think about the time that God, amen, gave me the money when I didn't have it from any other source. And I'm going to go automatically into praise and happiness. How many of y'all are committed to being happy here today? I want y'all to think about something. And I want y'all to think about it real good. None of us deserve the goodness of God. But how many of y'all are glad that God did it for us anyway? And, and those kind of things, I, I, I was, I was kind of down last week. I, I felt, uh, yeah, last week, and I just remember, began to think. I, I began to think about the times I had no gas in my car, and I was scrapping change, amen, and the bottom of my, my floorboard to get gas to make it from Columbia back to something. I, I was thinking about the times when I had, to, I had to go without lunch because I didn't have the money, and I was worrying about meeting my house payment, and worrying about having food to eat on the table. I began to think about all those things. And then immediately my spirit began to, to rise. And I began to thank God instead of complaining. One of the worst things we can do, brothers and sisters, is complain to a God that deserves all praise, honor, and glory. Can I get an amen for somebody? One of the worst things you can do is go to God about how he has not made a way. Out of all the many ways God has made for us, the Bible says we ought to continuously and every chance we get, we ought to be giving him praise. And so I want to encourage everybody this week. I want to encourage you to be happy. I want you to look like what you really are. The Bible says you are blessed. He didn't ask you if you are blessed. The Bible says you are blessed. I don't want you to go to your job as a testimony to who God is. I want you to go there looking happy. Can somebody say amen to that? I want you to go in your school. I want you to go there with a big smile on your face. So that when they look at you, and I know, I'm going to tell you how it is. I want your smile to be so big that they can see it through your mask. Can I get an amen for somebody? I want them to be able to see your smile through your eyes. And I want them to ask you, why are you so happy? And I want you to be able to say, because God is good. Can I get an amen for somebody? Can I get an amen for somebody? Tell them God is good. Tell them I'm not, I'm not miserable. I'm not unhappy. I'm a Christian. And to be a Christian means to be happy. Because God gives me divine happiness. And so I thank God for you today. 
I ask that the Lord will bless your going out and your coming in every day this week. I ask that God will give you an overflow of blessings, an overflow of blessings that so overflows your life that you have no other choice but to give it out to other people. Can I get amen for somebody on that? I ask that Lord will overflow us and bless us abundantly.